Okay, so in a previous lesson we talked about lunging, which is the form of attack and fencing. Today we're going to talk about parrying, which is an important part of the match because it prevents your opponent's attacks from landing and for them from getting a point on you. So go ahead and get your epes out. Make sure the groove side is the one that is tilted upwards facing the ceiling, and get in guard position. Now, make sure your feet are in the proper L position, with your dominant foot facing forward and your non-dominant foot perpendicular to it. Your legs should, be, should not be tense, and a little bend at the knees is okay, but don't slouch. Now, say you have a much taller opponent striking from above. Place your non-dominant hand behind you. Raise your sword on, arm up to the outside of your body, and tilt your wrist toward the inside. Make sure no part of your head or mask is sticking out above the blade, or it won't be an effective parry. This is called parry 1. Parry 2 is very similar, except your elbow is pointing toward your non-dominant side, and your arm is across your body. Make sure your arm does not move across your eyes, as this will affect your vision during the match. Parry 1 and parry 2 are rarely used, because most lunges are made at the torso and arm areas of the body. Go ahead and try them a few times, and if you can, check in the mirror to make sure that none of your body parts stick out above your blade. Good. Now go back to arm position. Speaking of, say your opponent is moving to lunge at your midsection or chest. Parry 3 is a vital parry in which you brush the other person's epee to the outside with a sweeping motion. Keep your wrist tight and straight, sword tilted upward slightly, and move it in an outward, solid motion. Good! This is the parry I find myself using most of the time. Make sure while you are doing this that your wrist is not peeking out from behind the foil, or it will provide a good target. Like parry 1 and parry 2, parries 3 and 4 are very similar. Parry 4 is simply done on the opposite side of your body, crossing over your, your non-dominant arm. Try parries 3 and 4 a few times. Now that we have that covered, we're going to skip parries 5 and 6, simply because they are a little more advanced than we need to worry about right now. In parry 7, tilt your sword in a downward motion, but be careful not to stab the ground. The ground didn't do anything to you. In the same sweep in motion you used with parry 3, push your opponent's imaginary sword out to the side. <laughs> this protects your legs. Check your mirror to make sure nothing is sticking out beyond the line of your blade. No hips, no elbows, and certainly no parts of your legs, because that's what you're really trying to protect. Go ahead and try parry 7 a few times. Remember to keep your sword straight and angled. Again, parry 7 is paired with parry 8, so they have similar functions. They both protect your legs and lower extremities like your hips. Parry 8 is also done with your epee pointed downward, sweeping to the opposite side of your body to protect your non-dominant hip and leg. Try it a few times, and make sure you're not dragging the tip of your sword on the ground. Alright, now we're going to try a popular drill to practice our parries. It's very simple. Start in the guard position. I'm going to have you lunge, then carry out a parry for you to show me, after I call its number out. Now follow my command. Lunge, parry one. Lunge, parry two. Lunge, parry three. Lunge, parry four. Now stop and check your position. Are your feet the, sitting the way they should be? Are they squared? Okay, good. Lunge, parry seven. Lunge, parry one. Lunge, parry three. Lunge, parry eight. Lunge, Parry 4, lunge, parry 2, lunge, parry 3. Good! I think you guys are getting this. That concludes today's lesson, and make sure you stretch afterwards. I'll see you next week!